Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up your own sandbox environment for malware analysis. Uh, now this video is again highly requested uh, after I made my Commando VM video and you sort of saw the isolation that I had and uh, my whole system with snapshots. And of course there's been an increase in the number of requests for malware analysis videos and one of them is how to create a sandbox environment uh, where you can actually perform your analysis without infecting any other computers or infecting your host computer and of course one of the best ways of going about doing this is by using a hypervisor or a piece of virtualization software and there are many options out there but two of them that stand out the most are going to be virtualbox and VMware. Now for the purpose of this video we are going to be using VirtualBox because it is the simplest to configure. Uh, I will be making a video on how to uh, set up a sandbox environment for VMware but I'm going to, be, going to be covering that in a different video. All right so the environment that we have is going to be very simple. You have your host operating system and you have your sandboxed environment. Uh, in our particular case our operating system of choice that we're going to be virtualizing and sandboxing is going to be Windows 10. Now many people like using Windows, uh, Windows 7 for malware analysis. That's perfectly fine. I'm simply using Windows 10 because that's what I have ready. Uh, but if you are using Windows, it's all up to you. Uh, in regards to licensing, I'm not going to talk about that because I, I'm sure you already know how to set that up for yourself, but you are going to require legitimate licenses. Uh, that's if you want a, an activated version of Windows running. Um, that being said, uh, let's actually get started. So the environment is going to be very, very simple. Now, there are a few things to take into consideration. I have a few notes that I just took over here. And let me explain a few things now. Uh, when talking about uh, setting up a sandbox environment, the first thing that you want to take into consideration is if you can, do not use your main computer or do not use the computer you use for work. Uh, the reason I say this is because uh, human beings are prone to mistakes. And if you are negligent in regards to the settings and the various configurations, many people have actually, uh, you know, ran malware without proper isolating or sandboxing their, uh, their environment or their virtual machine. And as a result, they've infected their host operating system and they've, uh, they've lost their data, all, all of that. There's nothing more embarrassing than actually uh, running malware on your own system yourself. And the worst part is knowing you did this uh, without taking the necessary precautions. So what I recommend is having another computer that you can use uh, that you really don't have anything important on. But if you if you don't have any other computer, don't worry about it. That's primarily why I have this video. The second thing you want to take into consideration if you can is to use a different network segment or a different network subnet apart from your main network subnet where you have all your computers linked up. And of course, this, these are just security precautions to make sure uh, in the worst case scenario, you do not infect any other computers on your network. And of course, this is going to vary. You may be doing this at work uh, or you may be doing this uh, in your home office. So it will really depend on you. All right. Uh, now, uh, the other point to take into, consi uh, into consideration is the fact that most modern malware is designed with anti-analysis in mind or anti-analysis features in mind. So what you'll find is most uh, modern pieces of malware will come with anti-analysis features and checks where it actually prevents you from analyzing it by detecting the environment it's being analyzed in. So what you'll find is that they come with anti-virtual machine features that prevent it from running as intended uh, when it discovers it's being run in a virtualized environment. So these uh, modern pieces of malware are actually being designed with anti-analysis in mind or to prevent uh, the analysis. Uh, so again, there are various things that it does to actually uh, to check whether it's being uh, analyzed. And one of them is, of course, it checks for a working internet connection. Uh, so that's primarily one of the things we'll be looking at when we talk about isolation. But there are plenty of tools that we can use to bypass that. The second thing is it takes a look at the system resources. But I'll get into that uh, in a second. So that might be your next question. How exactly uh, do you avoid these anti-malware and anti-virtualization checks? The first thing to do is to make the system appear as real as possible. What do I mean by that? Uh, what I mean by that is, first of all, making sure that your system resources uh, mimic a, a real system in the real world. Now, most people will run their virtual en environments with the, the least amount of RAM they can and assign it uh, very little uh, or a small amount of processors and cores. Uh, now, what you need to do is to make sure that you assign a realistic amount of resources 
uh, and most malware already does this so if you have anything less than one gigabyte of ram it's pretty much going to know that it's in a virtualized environment so i would recommend uh, our, uh, a ra uh, amount of ram uh, of two gigabytes uh, or four gigabytes i would recommend all the way to as much as you your system can handle or as as much as you can provide I would recommend uh, a minimum of two cores and a minimum disk space of 80 or 100 gigabytes just to keep things on a, uh, on a level playing field. All right, that being said, that's all in regards to, you know, uh, having uh, or to, to your system requirements. And the other thing you need to do is to make sure that you have commonly installed software. What I mean by this is, again, if you just simply install a an operating system like Windows or Windows 10, Windows 7, whatever the case, and you don't install anything on it, this, this, this is one of the ways that the malware actually uh, knows uh, that is being analyzed because you, you've only installed the particular uh, analysis tools. Uh, so what you should do is install a few third-party applications that one would typically find on a normal computer. All right, uh, and you can of course use tools like Nanai to do that in, uh, uh, in one go. Uh, and the other thing is to open a few documents on the operating system. Essentially just use the operating system that, so that you accumulate uh, logs and a few temp files because uh, these are all the things that will be checked by the various types of malware. And of course it's going to depend on what type of malware you're analyzing, but again, it's always good to keep that in mind. All right, uh, now the other thing and very important thing that you need to take into consideration is you should not install the VirtualBox guest editions. All right, so this will reduce, uh, of course, this will reduce performance and overall convenience, but it's very important because uh, most of the modern pieces of malware will actually check to see whether you have the VirtualBox guest editions or the VMware guest uh, or the VMware tools uh, installation on them. And these are essentially tools that enhance your virtualized system's performance and give you a better experience overall. So uh, these are one of the checks that the malware does. So it's a good thing to get rid of it. And that's probably the first thing it will check for. All right. Uh, and lastly, uh, we need to trick the malware into thinking it's online. And how do we do that? Well, first of all, we, we need to isolate uh, the connection of the virtual uh, of this of our virtualized environment so we need to make sure it cannot uh, it, it is not connected to the internet because we we want to monitor everything and of course we then want to uh, for the purpose of that we're going to be using the host only adapter but i'll get to that in a second but we're going to be using a tool called fakenet all right now fakenet will allow us to simulate uh, a real internet connection and it will allow us to intercept the requests that uh, any malware is making so as I said, most malware to, to, to actually make sure it's not in a virtualized environment or it's not in an analysis environment will actually uh, check up or look up for various popular websites like Facebook, uh, Google.com. And we need to make sure that we can uh, we can allow it to do so. We can just uh, create a uh, we can essentially use fake net to just stim uh, to, to actually simulate that uh, so that we can bypass that as well. All right, so let's get started. Let's talk about the base system. So I'm currently running Windows 10 and we're gonna be working with snapshots. That's quite important because snapshots are gonna help a lot uh, when, uh, when performing malware analysis. So the first thing you want to do is take a snapshot of the base operating system before you do any al analysis. And that's what I've done right over here. So uh, what you want to do is get on all the files that you want. So get on all the malware that you want and you can do so by uh, you, you can also you can do so by creating a shared folder i think i talked about this before so you can create a share a shared folder and make sure you select a directory that you know you can actually experiment with you can also encrypt it if you want or mount it whenever you feel uh, that you need to use it uh, but just before you do that you can take a look at my system resources here uh, you can see that i these are the settings i've specified uh, and uh, that's Pretty much it or in regards to to the settings that are specified for the uh, for the virtual machine all right so again the first thing is make sure your system your system specifications are realistic and of course this will depend on uh, based on operating system uh, the second thing is to install all the tools that you'll use these uh, these include the third party tools and all the uh, analysis tools all the debuggers all that good stuff so make sure you get it all set up uh, because uh, after this, we're not going to be having an, act, uh, an, an active internet connection, and I'll explain that in a second. And of course, uh, update your system to the latest version. Make sure you have all the updates that you want installed, and you're at the version you want. And of course, disable things like uh, li like Windows Defender. That's if you want to to have it disabled. If you are working with malware that will be uh, that will trip the antivirus, make sure you disable it beforehand. 
and lastly turn off uh, uh, the windows firewall all that other stuff and then you can finally take a snapshot so that's what i'm going to do uh, let me just check all these settings and i'll get back to you when that's done all right so uh, i've essentially disabled the windows firewall and i've disabled windows defender i'm currently waiting for a few updates to install and uh, once that is done we're pretty much good to go to the next stage which is where we're going to take a snapshot uh, and that is going to be the snapshot of the base system so that we can always revert to this before we've actually uh, put on any malware or if, uh, we have uh, we've done anything of uh, we've done any real analysis all right so we're going to take a snapshot then after that we're going to get uh, to setting up the analysis instance which is where you'll actually be performing your analysis of whatever malware you you are actually analyzing or reverse engineering all right so uh, i'll just get back to you and all the updates are done and we can get started on the next step on the, on the next stage all right guys uh, i've currently finished any updates and i'm just going to shut this instance down and i'll explain why in a second uh, we need to actually play around with the settings and we need to take a snapshot uh, what you can do is you can take a snapshot when the system is actually active uh, and that will really save you time so you don't have to re you don't have to start the system up every time you want to go back to your original base system but for the purpose of this video and the demonstration i'm just going to shut it down so I'll just wait for this to complete. You know how Windows goes. Uh, usually takes quite a while uh, to shut down. All right, there we go. It's already done. Uh, we'll go back into VirtualBox. And you can see I only have two virtual machines. I have uh, Kali virtual machine and I have my Windows 10 uh, virtual machine. So uh, if you take a look at my snapshots, I have the base system, uh, which is the current state. All right. And then I have a, a another uh, snapshot, which is uh, the snapshot that I had uh, that we actually I'd set up when I'd installed the uh, commando VM. All right, so I have that as well. Now, what I want to do is uh, I want to take a snapshot. All right, and uh, I can take an additional snapshot, uh, but of course I've saved uh, the uh, the original one as uh, I've called it Windows 10 base. So I'm just going to take a, a new snapshot here, and I'm just going to call it. Uh, let's see, we'll call it uh, analysis box. We'll just call it malware analysis box and we'll hit OK. And uh, we've now that that is going to be our current state. So we want to click on the settings now since that is our current state. Uh, you can name it whatever you want uh, in regards to the name here uh, in for the system. You want to keep everything as it is. What we're looking for particularly is uh, the network and we want to go to the host only adapter and make sure that is set to the virtual box host only ethernet adapter and that'll make sure the communication is only between uh, the host and of course uh, the the virtualized environment so i'm just going to hit okay uh, if you want to add any other uh, shared folders if you're still transferring your malware make sure to do it from here setting it up is extremely easy just uh, select the folder path uh, provide it a name if you want to uh, make sure you set it to auto mount on every start and give it a mount point uh, and you can do this by using a letter like h j uh, one that is not being used all right that being said we're pretty much good to go here so i'm just going to hit okay and i'm going to start that instance now and this is going to this is what we're going to be using for our analysis all right so we are back in our malware analysis box and now all we need to do is uninstall the virtual box guest editions and I'll show you how to use FakeNet to simulate a real internet connection so that uh, any malware that you do use will have the impression that you are connected to the internet. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you eject uh, the current, uh, the VirtualBox guest editions from the virtual drive here. So just hit eject and depending on uh, what type of virtual machine you have, uh, either 32-bit or 64-bit, you, if you go into your program files right over here, you go into Oracle VirtualBox guest editions and just hit uninstall right over here. That should uninstall the guest uh, editions uh, the virtual box guest editions from your operating system and of course this is going to be different depending on whether or not you have a linux box for analysis etc etc and uh, as you probably have already seen uh, our screen has gone black so i'll wait for this there we are it looks like it's done uh, so i'll wait for this to complete and i'll get back to you when that is done all right so it's prompting me to restart windows and that's exactly what i'm going to do and again i'll wait for this uh, for when this is done and i'll get back to you uh, in a moment 
All right, we are back in our malware analysis box uh, after we have uninstalled the VirtualBox guest editions and you will note uh, a bit of, of a decreased performance, but that's perfectly fine given the circumstance. Um, so I will have the link in the description to FakeNet. You can actually download it. So go ahead and uh, get that on your system or you should have already done that uh, regardless. Uh, so I'm just gonna open up the FakeNet folder here and uh, let's just open this up. By the way, you can change the resolution uh, by going into the settings or the control panel if you're on Windows 7. Uh, FakeNet has to be run as administrator. You have the FakeNet configuration file right over here. Uh, so if I run the FakeNet executable here as administrator, uh, so we'll just wait for it to start. It's gonna start modifying the DNS settings and it's going to allow us to begin the connection. So right over here, you can already see we've, we're getting tons of requests uh, right over here. Uh, and this is essentially going to simulate a real internet connection. So that means if I open up uh, Firefox here and I try to load google.com. So if I try and access google.com here, uh, you can see that it's going to give us this little, uh, this little warning here. Uh, now, for some reason, I if, let me just see if I can minimize this a little bit. Uh, if I can just minimize this so that we can view the certificate here. So you can view the certificate and we can open up the network login page. Uh, and it will essentially give you the, this uh, success page right over here. So detectportal.firefox.com. Uh, and this is uh, essentially it'll give you a bit of information in regards to fake net. So uh, that being said, if we go back into our, our command prompt, now you can probably uh, take a look at the requests here. The, the, uh, you can see all the requests over here. But the best part is uh, if you actually edit the fake net.cfg file, which is right over here, uh, this allows you to actually uh, dump the output. So for example, you can take a look at the options here. So you need to specify yes or no for any of the options you want. So if we want to dump the output, we can say, for example, uh, yes here. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to hit yes. And we're going to save the fake net or CFG file here. And if I just uh, exit out of fake net and uh, sorry, I run this one more time. You can see, first of all, that it carry it essentially stores all the packets in a PCAP file. However, if we run this admin as administrator here, uh, it's going to start it up again for us. And uh, this time, all the, uh, all the requests will be logged for us uh, in, a, in the PCAP file right over here, which is fantastic. So again, you can go ahead and take a look at the uh, fakenet.cfg file. This is going to be really, really great. Uh, it allows you to actually edit quite a few things. I'll probably make a different video on this because it does, um, it does actually... Uh, deserve that but again you can go ahead and take a look at it and it really is fantastic and it will essentially simulate an internet connection for any malware that you're analyzing uh, that being said that's pretty much going to be it for this video guys uh, thank you so much for watching if you have any questions or suggestions let me know in the comment section on my social networks or at the forum at hackexploit.org and i'll be seeing you in the next video peace guys